Welcome everyone, I'm Joe the Lone Warrior. Today I'm going to show you some of the leveling that I'm doing in my yard with topsoil behind me. I initially got two yards. I'm left with a little bit right now. I did some yesterday uh, after I got home from work and I'm finishing up this morning before it's probably going to rain today. Uh, it's Saturday uh, here in August, the uh, weekend before Labor Day. Uh, just want to show you some of the tools that I use. Uh, to move mulch and to move topsoil and I'll show you how my DIY lawn leveling rake is uh, doing. So let's get started. So as you can see I have a Gorilla cart. I just got one uh, a couple uh, days ago. It's the 7 cubic feet Gorilla cart. It's really awesome. I suggest anyone out there that uses a traditional wheelbarrow go check one of these out it makes your life a lot easier um, i move this stuff so much quicker so much easier uh, with the gorilla car i'll show you how it works in a second um, but just wanted to show you the tools that i use um, i love a pitchfork uh, pitchforks they're so they're so much versatile uh, obviously i have the cobalt here one of these flat uh low shovels right here but when you get at your top of your pile, um, it makes your life so much easier because all you gotta do is just stick that on there like that. Obviously, you're only getting a little bit as opposed to that. You're gonna get a lot more material on the end of that shovel. But this just makes your life a lot easier when you have your pile real high. Um, and then you work your way down, obviously, to the bottom. Then I'll, I usually typically use one of these kind of shovels. And like I said, I do this with mulch and I do this with uh, topsoil. The, both these kind of uh, shovels right here, the pitchfork and your flat shovel right here, uh, they go a long way. So if you don't have these, invest in these, especially if you do mulching in your yard every year. Um, and I get mine delivered on my driveway. I don't mind washing it off when I get done. Uh, you know, any of the black or dye from the mulch, whatever. Um, you know, if you can get, you know, bulk delivery, I suggest you do. It's always a lot cheaper to do it that way. Um, and then you just dump it and then you have your pile and you can just go. So I just picked up a really cool tool. It's the Gorilla Cart right here. This is the seven cubic feet one. They also sell, a, I think it's like either a three or a four. I picked this up at Home Depot. Um, they only had like a couple left, so I was lucky to get it. But this thing, it's, it's a lifesaver. Um, if you're used to the traditional wheelbarrow, this is so much easier to, to pull as opposed to lift with that wheelbarrow. Um, I moved probably, this was probably about like two yards yesterday. And I'm only down to this little bit right here. I, when I woke up this morning, I think I had like a little less than a yard. Um, so I was moving a little bit before filming this. Um, but I did not feel the fatigue that I normally would from a t traditional wheelbarrow. Um, I've moved a lot of mulch in my day, uh, you know, at my house and with my dad when he had his lawn business uh, when I was younger. So I know what it's like using a wheelbarrow with, you know, yards of mulch. And this is topsoil, so topsoil is a lot heavier than mulch, uh, in my opinion, at least. Um, but the tools that I like using when doing uh, topsoil is a, a traditional pitchfork, just like this. Home Depot or Lowe's, you can get these at. Um, and then one of these nice, uh, these are smaller uh, shovels, but they have the big flat bottom here. So you can fit a lot of material, especially when you get down to the bottom here. But typically when you have your pile up, you know high when you typically get a bulk delivery i usually always get bulk delivery at my house i don't mind washing the blackness off the cement into this into this um you know into the uh, street um it's cheaper to get bulk delivery if you can in your area um, i have a really good uh mulch distributor in my area it's very local um but they, they'll dump it you know usually your pile is really high so just imagine this pile up here what you can do is just use a pitchfork just like this and then you're just scooping it up. Obviously, you're going to be doing smaller scoops, but it saves your back because this, these kind of shovels, they're not going to be able to go in like this real good and get a good small, uh, big material when the pile's up high. These shovels are good for when you're at the bottom and you're trying to get that ending, you know, closer to the cement. So typically. I'm usually always using a pitchfork at the top and I'm using this flat shovel at the bottom. I'm um, again, these obviously cobalt, that's from Lowe's. Uh, you know, the Home, Home Depot, I think, believes they sell a version. They have metal ones and they have uh, plastic bottoms. I like the metal ones. I, I usually use this 
sometimes when it snows out as well so I can pick up a bunch of uh, you know snow uh, you know piles it's a little bit easier to use this um, but that's typically how I work when I use mulch or uh, topsoil like we have here uh, pitchfork first at the top of the pile flat shovel at the bottom I'm going to show you how this works next and why this thing is worth the money so real nice and easy all you got to do is just pull the gorilla cart and then all you got to do is back it up into a certain area if you want it in a certain area it does take a little bit of getting used to um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it so shoot, I can show you in the camera here but I got a little bit of a low area right over here I'm just going to fill in But what's, what's really nice about the Gorilla Cart is it has this handle right here that locks to the bottom base. You have really four big tires that fill up with air. You can replace them if for some reason they did uh, get a flat tire. Um, but what you do is, is you just put your handle right here, your hand right here on the handle. You lift it up. You let it dump. And then what I've been noticing is uh, to really get everything out, what you can do is, is push this all the way down. And the tires flip up and I grab my handle and I just give it a little buck have it come towards me shake it a little bit if you got anything in there you just push it out and then that just sits back down and locks back down this thing is a lifesaver if you're used to the traditional wheelbarrows uh, again seven cubic feet they have a smaller version as well um, but it's worth it if you move a lot of mulch or topsoil throughout the year, sand even, if you do sand leveling in your yard. Um, I'm using topsoil um, because I want some of that nutrients that's, or, that's in there. It's a compost uh, mixed topsoil, so I wanted some of that into my soil. I just wanted to introduce some more organic matter into my soil uh, before I go to do my seeding next week, uh, Labor Day weekend. So the two tools that I'm using to spread out my topsoil in my yard are a very long here. I believe this is a 36 inch landscaping rake. Again, these are sold at Home Depot, Lowe's. Um, I got this one, Cobalt, is obviously sold at Lowe's. And over here, I have my DIY lawn level rake. Uh, I made this, I think it was about two weeks ago. Um, was using it yesterday. Um, it does have some flaws to it. Um, you know it's a little bit hard to push it out uh, from the beginning so what I've been doing is is using the landscaping rake first um, and just kind of spreading the areas out that I dumped with this um, this just has a little bit you know more of a uh, blade here where you can push material out with So once I get done pushing the material out with the landscape rate, I usually throw that to the side. And then what I've been doing is taking the DIY loan level right here. I'm then just going back and forth, spreading this out even more. And that's pretty much it. So like I said, using the landscape rake here, uh, the 30, I believe it's 36 inches, spreading out those piles first, coming back here with the lawn level rake that I made, the DIY. Um, it's been holding up pretty well, I would say. Uh, none of the bolts have been coming loose or anything. Handles on there are nice and tight. Um, you know, topsoil is heavy, that's why I'm out of breath. So it is a lot to push around and it doesn't help that it's very humid today here in South Jersey. Um, that's why I typically don't wear tank tops, but it's hot today, it's humid. Uh, and it's only the early morning right now. So, but that's what I'm doing. What I'm gonna do is once I finish up, take the camera off, walk you around the yard, show you the different spots that I did. And we're gonna throw down next weekend and pray and hopefully everything comes in nice. I believe it will that mountain view seed that i'm using it's high quality seed for my front so hopefully everything comes in so i'm going to get back to it 
So like I said, uh, leveling off with topsoil, it is heavy. Uh, the DIY leveling rake, I think it did fairly well. Um, you know, there is a little bit of some flaws that I might fix, you know, if I ever use it again. Um, you know, maybe if I do some sand leveling next year. Hopefully you guys found this video a little bit helpful uh, with the leveling rake and the landscaping rake. Those are really two great tools, especially the landscaping rake, that big 36 inch rake. It's awesome to move, you know, material around fast. Um, so if you have, you know, leveling to do, check out those rakes. They're really helpful. They're really good to use. Um, it's a good investment, especially if you do mulch, things of that nature. But, you know, I think everything came out pretty well. This side came out pretty well. It was very bumpy, very uneven, even before um, I messed this side up this year. Um, I'm disappointed in myself, but you live and you learn. Um, you know, it did, my grass did come in very well last year, as you can see from a picture here. Um, I was really proud with that GCI, GCI uh, tall fescue that I put down. Um, but I'm going with the Mountain View seed this year from Tuckahoe Turf Farms, Blue Tag certified. I think that seed's gonna hopefully do better. I think it's gonna do a lot better in the summertime next year. Um, and I'm not moving any more sprinklers. So they are set, they are not getting moved around anymore. So I won't have to mess around with that in the springtime like I did this year. Um, I actually just dug a trench a couple days ago uh, all the way from the vent, uh, gate back there to where my valve is back there all the way down under the sidewalk because I want—I just want even coverage. I don't want to waste water. Um, that's important, especially when you know you have overlaps in your sidewalk. Um, it's just a just a waste of water. Um, so that's why I wanted to fix this kind of stuff, get it done now, so I don't have to mess with it next year, and I can just focus on maintaining that grass, that you know new fresh grass that I'm going to be, you know, it's going to come in. I it's, I know it's going to come in great this year. Um, so make sure you check out my videos on the five steps uh, that I find, that I think, in my opinion, that I recommend that are, are very successful for uh, the overseed. So I'll leave a link above and below for, to that video and the DIY lo lawn leveling rake. I'll leave that below as well if you want to check out that video. Um, I think anybody can really do the DIY uh, lawn leveling rake. It's, you know, it's not, as long as you have some tools, certain tools, um, a grinder, you know, um, a socket wrench you know different things like that you should be fine you should be able to make it yourself at home um, a lot of the parts you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's so if you're interested in that want to save yourself a little bit of money there are there have been some negative reviews out there for a certain company's um, lawn leveling rake lately um, another youtuber put out a review about it very controversial um, video um, so you know some of them aren't made the greatest some are made great um, so if you want to save a little bit of money, make it yourself, check out that video. Um, I think it's super helpful. So like always, if you found today's content helpful or if you enjoyed it, you liked it, make sure you smash that like button. Helps out with the channel, helps out with people find the video. And also, like I said before, if you're interested in that DIY lawn level break or the five steps that I find successful and that I recommend for an overseed, check out the videos right here and right here. And always make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new. It's right here. And I'll see you in the next one.